In a kingdom, there lived a great king. The kings before him and he himself bore the extreme signature of Raj Dharma, the duty of a king. His name is King Vikram Barma. Vikram Barma was as powerful as he was kind. All the subjects respected him as well as loved him. The king's popularity spread beyond his kingdom to the subjects of different kingdoms. He was respected by the kings of all the neighboring kingdoms. Saints or monks also liked him. Once King Vikram Barma was traveling all over the kingdom on foot during a state festival, he was talking to the subjects. He wanted to be aware of the grievances of the people and the lack of happiness and peace in their lives. The subjects also spoke to the king with reverence and respect, telling the king about their grievances. The king was trying to solve the problems of the subjects. He was ordering the ministers and commanders accompanying the king to see that the problems of the subjects could be solved. The king was elated. The subjects were also very happy to have the king in their midst. The festivities spread across the entire kingdom along the highways. People came down the road and they were honoring and loving their king. While the king was talking to his subjects, he saw an old monk sitting under a lonely tree. King Bikram Barma approached him, prostrated before him, and asked if he was fine. He took his blessings and returned. In the evening, the commander Shatrujit met the king. He said to the king, Your Majesty, sing a strange thing today. A question has arisen in my mind. If you allow me, I would like to ask you the question. The king said, Let me hear your question. The commander said, Your Majesty, at today's festival, I saw that people spontaneously showed their respect to you and bowed before you, whereas you bowed before an old monk. Does not this dishonor you? Can a king's head bow before anyone but God? Vikram Barma smiled and said, I understand your question. I will answer your question tomorrow. But before that, you have to do one of my tasks. Come tomorrow morning, I'll talk to you about it. The next morning, the commander Shatrujit appeared before King Vikram Barma and said, May the king win. Seeing the commander, Vikram Barma said, Come Shatrujit, I have four boxes for you. Each box contains an item. You have to sell them and that is your task. The boxes are quite big and gorgeous. The commander said, That's a very simple task, my lord. I will sell them easily. But what are there in these boxes? King Bikram Barma said, I will not tell you what the items are and you will not open the boxes yourself. That is the condition. You will open the object in the first box only when you sell it. When that is sold, you will open the second box and sell the object. This way, you have to sell all four objects. Remember, you can't see the items beforehand. The commander Shatrujit was a little surprised. But he obeyed the king's orders and went out to sell them. After going some distance into the city, he wanted to sell the first box. He opened it 
and found a fish head inside. The commander thought, such trifling things have been given to me to sell by the king. It will be sold in no time. And he was right. The commander went into the market and gave a trade cry. Who wants to buy this fish head? Never you have seen such a thing before. People were very amused to see the commander selling the fish head. Immediately there was a crowd and the fish head was sold very easily. Then the commander opened the second box and saw that there was a goat's head in it. It was not too difficult to sell the goat's head. It was also sold very easily. The commander realized by then that the other two boxes would also contain the head of some animals. The commander's guess was correct. It was found the third box contained a deer's head. Venison is very tasty and at that time people enjoyed venison. A man from a noble family came forward and bought the deer's head. The commander was very happy. In a short time, three boxes were sold. Now only the fourth box was left. The people present there, like the commander, were extremely curious to know what contained the food box. The commander's eyes opened wide in surprise when he unlocked the food box. The people standing nearby also ran away in horror because the food box contained a whole human head. The commander was not ready to see that. He tried hard but could not sell the human head. He left that market and went into another market where people reacted the same. When people saw the head, they ran away from it. No one even wanted to look at the human head. Buying it was completely out of question. The commander saw that it became really difficult to sell that human head. The whole day passed, it was not sold. In the evening, the commander returned to the palace and told the king everything. After listening to all the words of the commander, the king said, When you cannot sell a human head, then give it to someone free of cost. Go for it again tomorrow. Try and see for sure you can do it. The commander said, Your Majesty, no one is willing to look at the head of a dead man. Who will take it? The king said, Try it. Come back tomorrow and tell me who took this human head. Saying this, the king went into the palace. The commander stood there worried for a while. He could not think at all who would take that man's head. The next day, the commander went around and tried hard to sell the human head, but to no avail. No one took a second look at the head. Then the defeated commander was resting under a tree and thought, it will not be possible for me to do this. Who will take this dead human head? If it were the head of another animal, it would have been sold out. But even if a human head is given for free, no one will take it. This is an impossible task. While the commander was sitting, Thinking about these things, a monk was passing that way. The commander saw him and went towards him. He explained his problem to the monk in a few words. Then he asked, O oh monk, why does no one take this man's head? 
The monk said, This is the best human head. The commander was surprised and said, Why are you saying this? The monk smiled and said, Will this head offend anyone? The commander said, No. The monk said, Will this head be angry with anyone? The commander said, No. The monk said, Is this head subject to desire? The commander said, No. The monk said, It is because it has no ego, nor anger, nor greed, nor lust. It has none of the vices that a living person has. So in terms of virtue and value, it is the best head of man. But no man will take it. For the vices that are not in this head are in man. So they will not be able to judge its value. The commander said, Then to whom shall I give it? The monk said, You may give it to me. I'll keep it with care and respect. Returning to the palace in the evening, the commander told the king all about this amazing incident and asked the king, Your Majesty, the monk said that the head of a dead man is free from all vices. I can understand that, but I do not understand what this has to do with the answer to my question. King Bikram Barma said, You asked me yesterday why I bowed my head before that old monk. Because, in your opinion, a king's head should not bow before a human being, right? That's right, said the commander. A king can only bow before God. The king said, Don't you think that behind your thinking is self-conceit? We don't bow down our heads because of pride. But today you realized what is the value of a human head. Today the monk said that the person's head is worthy because it has no ego. But the head of a conceited person is worth nothing. So I bowed my head before that old monk because I wanted to crush the ego inside me. The egoless head takes the highest place of honor by its virtue. Friends, it is our duty to protect our self-respect. Again, we need to understand the difference between self pride and self-respect. Self-conceit undermines our self-esteem. We have to crush the ego in us and become better human beings. Thank you very much.